Hello and welcome to Creativity with DA3 Live. I'm your host, Don Allen III, and welcome back. Today we're gonna to be ending our series, our mini series of the Procreate to Cinema 4D, and we're gonna end with our part four, taking our Cinema 4D uh, piece and bring it into Photoshop. Uh, today's goal will be, oh, I didn't update the goal yet. It's not the drawing one, it's gonna be the reverse. We're gonna be taking the polygon version and bringing that one into Photoshop. But uh, let's double check that the show is live streaming to YouTube. And yes, it looks like it is. So uh, let me go ahead and start the show. Welcome, welcome to Creativity with DA3 Live. And this here is what we have so far. This is what we're gonna be working with inside of Photoshop. So let's open up Photoshop and create, actually we can just import it as a new drawing. So let's go into our Actually, where did I save that to? So many options. So many options. Let me go back to Cinema 4D and find out where I saved this one to. By right-clicking the file and showing it in the Explorer. There it is. There it is. And then we're just go ahead and right-click, open with Photoshop 2017. Cool. So now our, our 3D render is now a 2D render inside of Photoshop. And I believe that this is where the magic truly begins. So for starters, let's bring in the Tarantula Galaxy. Bring it on, bring it on. I'm gonna scale this galaxy up a little bit, set it behind. Let's see if we can just kind of move the galaxy around just a tad. So just a hair here, let's just move our galaxy. Uh, let's see, something like this might work. Let me kind of scale it down a little bit. Cool, so we got our tarantula galaxy placed. Um, next, what I wanna do is bring some clouds in there. So you're noticing probably that the mouth is a little messed up. We're gonna cover this up with fire, literally. Fire from the dragon. So I found a bunch of fire on in, uh, Google Images. I'm gonna drag those into the comp now. Got this fire. We have this fire. We have this fire and this fire and this fire. And notice how all of these have black backgrounds. This is gonna make it very, very easy to remove the fire and isolate it. So for example, we can just go and set this mode from normal to screen, and now all of the data that was holding the black pixels is vanished, and we can place the fire exactly where we need it to be. Cool, that's the first bit of fire. Let's add the next bit of fire. This is more of the beam looking thing. We're gonna do the same thing and set this to screen. We uh, set the, this is a filter mode, it's called screen. And we're gonna extend this out. Kinda just do that right about here. Cool, cool, cool. Next, let's grab this fire. And the option I can show you, it's over here. You select your layer, and you go to the normal, and you set it to screen. And that will turn off all the pixels that are black. And it will just leave uh, values of high luminance. Okay, cool. So we got some fire, we got some fire added here. Friendly, friendly fire. There we go. Cool. So we got some realistic fire there from the dragon. Great. I might not actually use this star system. Let's go into Google Images, uh, find some different stars. Uh, actually, no, before we do that, let's, let's, add some, let's add some glows. So I'm gonna bring a new brush in here. Uh, not that brush, I'm just gonna use a soft default brush, one that comes with Photoshop. And I'm gonna grab this color, this yellow color, and just gently go around the areas that I would kind of want to be glowing. The eye and the teeth and stuff. And then we're gonna do the same idea and set this to screen. Ooh, it's a little too strong. Let's, um, let's use the eraser tool now, the large surface area, and kind of just dial it back a little bit. Kind of dial it back, just erasing a little bit of the pixels here. Cool, cool. Uh, we need some clouds. I have these clouds, this, these photos of clouds that I took when I was in Italy. Let me see if I still have them, and I'll just use those clouds. Nope, that's not that cloud. Maybe it's this cloud. Let's see. 
Nope, that's a train. I took a photo of, where are my clouds? Nope, not clouds. Where are the clouds? Should be popping up any moment. Oh, these clouds might actually work fine. These are some friends of mine. And let's just bring the photo in. Uh, we're not gonna show the friends, unfortunately. We're just gonna be using this image for the clouds. So what we'll do is erase the faces of people by using the eraser brush. There we go, I'm gonna bring back the dragon. And then we're gonna set this behind our dragon layer, but above our other ones. And we're gonna expand it out, make it a lot larger, kind of fill this up. Cool. And then what we can do is set it to an overlay. No, not an overlay, we can try a soft light. Yikes, maybe a multiply. You have to kind of play around with the different settings here to see which ones work the best for you. Um, I kind of like that one, seeing some of the stars come through, but also still seeing the clouds. Let's duplicate the layer just in case we decide to change our mind by hitting Command J. So now we have another copy of the layer. And we can use this copy to scale it down and create some more variation in the clouds. This, maybe even rotate it a little bit. Yeah, something like that. Cool. Neat, 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 neat. All right. Next, we need to add some texture from maybe a, an actual reptile. I think might be might be fun to bring in. So, what I'm going to do is again go to Google. Oh, we're live streaming. Uh, on YouTube right now. If you want to watch the YouTube page, you are more than welcome to. It's a uh, full HD. Uh, should be higher quality than the phone one right now. Okay. Uh, we're on Google Images, so I'm just going to search for images. And I'm going to look for the back of a snake. Cool. And we're going to look for the images of the back of a snake. We've got lots of snakes here. This one's looking the closest to what I want, so I'm gonna view more inside of Google's search algorithms. Looking for a snake texture, let's look at that. This one might actually work really well. Ah, oh, it's a really small image. I take it back, let's go back. Let's set our parameters to something like larger, something size, large. Let's go, large snakes, snake texture. I just need something that will work for a effect that I want to try out right now. This one will probably work, but I don't want all the yellow texture in there. I just need the scaliness of it. Hmm. Where is the snake texture? Oh, this one will work perfectly. All right, cool. So let's view this image. Ah, why is it a small image? My apologies. This needs to be much larger for me to use it for the effect that I need to do. Let's see if we can open this another way. Um, nope, all right, so they, they won't let you grab that image. Hmm. Oh, snake drawing image. Oh, this one might work. Ah, why is it doing that? some snake texture. All right, this one's the best one we got so far. So let's bring this into the desktop and then bring it into Photoshop. We're gonna use that snake texture to make the back look a little bit more realistic. So I'm gonna bring the snake in there and we're gonna expand it up. And looking for a spot Ah, I see just the spot. Let's go ahead and rotate this snake. Yeah, right about there ought to do. And then what we'll do with the snake is we'll erase, erase, erase. So I first made a copy of it, and then we we'll just go ahead and erase. Okay, so just do that for now. All right, so we're just erasing the snake texture. Then we're gonna grab this texture and go into overlay. Or we can do screen right so now we can kind of see the snake texture 
a lot better on top of our existing art. So let's just kind of scale it down, kind of just bring that in there, see if we can match the, the roundness of the back part right there. Cool, I think that looks all right. And I'll just kind of isolate it by hitting Command J, hiding the rest. And let's see, we've got screen, here's lighten. Lighten kind of sinks it in a little bit better. Here's multiply to dark. Here's darken. Mm, let's try overlay. Nope, let's go with lighten then. And with lighten on, we're gonna go back with the eraser brush. And just kind of get, get rid of some of this texture in here. Cool. All right. Uh, oops, wrong one. So we got the snake texture in there. We can reuse parts of the snake for the wings as well. So what I'm gonna do is I made a duplicate and I'm gonna rotate this to kind of match the angle of the wings. And just do something right about there. Hit Command J to duplicate the layer. Cool, and then we'll erase, 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 erase some stuff. Just like before. It's a repetitive process. Cool, so I'm just erasing some of the snake texture. And then we're gonna use the same technique and use lighten to bring that snake texture more firmly onto the, uh, the existing artwork. And then we use a bigger eraser brush to make sure it's not appearing in other parts of the frame. That one's a lot more subtle than the other one, so I might even change this to darken. No, I'd take back when keep it lightened. Cool. Okay. Next, I'm gonna actually see if I can duplicate our entire composition, flatten all those layers together, just to get an idea of what this thing is looking like. So if I merge all these layers and then crop the layers to this square here, what we're left with is this dragon person thing. Cool. So now I'm going to go in with the uh, the dodge tool. And we're going to dodge certain parts. So the dodge tool affects the highlight data of, of a, a mesh. So parts that need to be highlighted are the face, because they're so close to this fire. And also we need to make the glow on the ground a little bit more pronounced, since it's by this fire. And we're just doing that with the dodge tool. We can click and hold on the dodge tool to bring up our burn tool, which does the opposite. It kind of sinks the darker values in and, 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 and burns them, makes them a little bit darker. Um, it can be helpful for adding a little bit more separation and isolation between different parts. And so we kind of just dodge by using this, like a, it's like a shader, almost like doing contouring. Um, cool, so yeah, I was doing a little bit of that contour stuff. Next, we're gonna bring in a lens flare on the eyeball and reduce the size of the, of the lens flare quite a, quite a bit. And then we'll do this thing called overlay. Oops, no, how about we try screen? There we go. And we'll just place the screen right there on the eyeball. Reduce it down, rotate it. Increase it, squash it. Okay, so we got that kind of glowing eye before and after. Uh, let's use the eraser brush on this one as well. And just erase around the eyeball and make sure it's looking all right. Interesting, interesting. Okay, uh, let's add a glow to that moon up there as well. I think it could, I think it could help. So like before, we'll grab the eraser brush or a soft brush, give it a nice glow as well, and just kind of fan it out. There we go. All right, cool. So let's flatten those ones out. The merged layers, there we go. So now we got everything merged together. And with it, we'll duplicate the merge layers and see if we can run this through some, some filters. So I like to use a filter called Camera Raw Filter. 
and it will treat your image as if it was a camera raw photograph. So you can affect overarching colors, uh, saturation, exposure, all sorts of kind of things. Things that you would want to control in the image. And you get that flexibility with camera raw. Um, so I'm kind of just playing around with the settings here. Let's try even doing an auto, auto on the um, color temperature, but then we can increase the clarity or decrease the clarity depending on the, the look that you want to go for. You could decrease the saturation if you wanted more of like a dark vibe. You can increase the saturation with more of a futuristic look. Now we have like a noir kind of vibe <laughs> with this dragon. Uh, let's see if we can increase the vibrance. Yeah, I might do something like that. Now we'll go into our color curves. We've got our red curve. You can grab all the red colors, even the, just, just the shadows of the reds or just the highlights. Might kind of do something along the lines of that. Cool, and just lower that red on the highlight there. Go to our green channel and just see where the, where the greens are living at and just adjust them, just slight, slight adjustments. See if we get some cool effects going on here. Whoa, too much green. effect though. Let's try blue. So you could kill the blue and make it all yellow or you can super increase the blue and make it kind of that contrasted vibe. You have lots of different looks. Right now I'm in increasing the blue in the midtones and shadows. Now it's just decreasing the blue in the midtones and shadows. That's how these curves kind of work. You can isolate individual bands of color. kind of cool or very cool all right so we got the sharpening I might leave the sharpening alone I don't want to mess with that now you can isolate individual colors hue so if the reds too strong we can grab just the red tones and decrease it make it less or sorry this is the hue of it not the saturation so you can change the hue of, of specific bands of color for example we can change the color of that blue to something else if we wanted to go for a more magenta vibe or if we want to stick to the blue style. I kind of like the blue, however, I am a fan of magenta. So we might lean a little bit more towards the magenta side on this one. And then for the red body, we might adjust the magentas that are currently in the shot. Just make those mountains be a little more purpley. And then let's go back to those reds. We can adjust the red very slightly to make it a little bit more orange, like our original drawing. Now we can go to our saturation and reduce, we can increase the saturation in the red, we can decrease it. Depends on what the effect you're going for is. Let's grab that purple color up there and just kind of play with the purples. See if we can increase and decrease. Cool, I'm just adjusting the highlights now, the luminance values. I want to bring this white light on here because that moon, that moon has got to hit the character. Since we made that in Cinema 4D, I want to make sure that everything's aligning nicely across the platforms. Cool, so I think that's about it for the effects that I would wanna do here in the camera raw editor inside of Photoshop for our 3D model of this dragon thing. Right now I'm just increasing the haze, so there's just a little bit of fog that will appear, and I'm gonna hit okay. Cool, so here's our before and after, before, after. Very different worlds. Next, I'm going to bring this into another program, or sorry, no, it's a plugin. It's a free plugin for uh, Photoshop called, I think, the Nick Collection. And I use this Analog Effects Pro 2. And this will do analog style effects onto your images, which is really helpful if you're trying to go for like a vintage style look. Um, it comes up with presets, but it also allows you to dive into each of these and customize the look and feel. You get a before and after view, you have a split view, you have a single view, you have options is the point that I'm trying to make. And it's kind of like a super Instagram filter, except you get a lot more control. So I might start off with something like this and then change the film type. So these are just different films that I'm throwing onto this. Then I might go into the lens vignette and add more vignetting of white or less vignetting, make it black, increase the size of the vignette. 
little bit, a lot, whatever we want to do. I might just increase it a little bit here. And then we can go to our basic adjustments, like our saturation. We can reduce it if we want a you know, more black and white kind of vibe. Or we can increase it if we're trying to go for something kind of fantastical. Detail extraction can kind of ruin the image really quickly, so you got to be careful with that one. I'm going to reduce the detail extraction just a little bit. And then for brightness, you can lower it if you want to make it more of a contrast vibe. You could increase it if you're trying to really blast the highlights and overexpose the image. But I don't really want to overexpose the image too much since it took so long to make. Cool, so we got that color panel there. Um, dirt and scratches. So we can add scratches to the film as if it was taken with an older camera. And that's really fun too. So we're just trying out different ones. And then once you find one you like, you can place it, move it around. Um, in general, they're pretty good with the, with the ones that they give you, but I like to just do that. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. And then let's see, if you go into the classic camera settings, you can add even more effects. So you can throw on a double exposure. Oh, dang it, he erased everything else. Ah, let's see if I can go back one step. Yeah, okay, cool. Let's add a double exposure to this. So let's click the plus sign next to the double exposure. And then you can place the double exposure where you need it to be where you want the origin to be. So maybe I want the origin to be at its face. And then I want to kind of play with this and change the size of the double exposure. And then I want to reduce the uh, exposure strength so that it's not so dominant, perhaps. Whoa, too strong. Let's try this other one. This one's a little bit over overkill. Maybe let's not do the double exposure. I wish I could just lower the opacity of it just a tad, but that wasn't an option there. Hmm. Cool. All right, so we got the double exposure. Maybe we can just play with the position a bit. See if there's other spots we can place it. Okay, so let's place the double exposure right around here. Might be kind of cool to have. And then even increase the exposure just a little bit. I mean, uh, this the scale of it. Cool. So now we got a double exposure of the scene. That's got to be fun. Wonderful. Now I might want to add some lens distortions, maybe. We'll see, we'll at least turn it on. All right, here's the lens distortion layer. I'm just gonna hit the plus sign next to it. And then by default, it creates some distortions. It can do some um, pin cushion or barreling of the sensor. Lots of options. Do a chromatic shift of just the magentas and the greens or the yellows and blues or the cyans and reds. I might turn off the lens distortions. I might not need them for this particular piece. Cool. All right, so now we have the kind of lighting done for our 3D dragon creature. We have a nice planet up there. We have some kind of star or moon. Um, so I'm going to hit OK. So that's going to bring us back into Photoshop, and it's going to apply these plugins straight to the canvas. Um, let me double check on the YouTube. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, there we go. So that is, that's the effects that we just added to the composition. So then I'm gonna duplicate this one. And now this might be the part where we can bring this final comp onto the iPad and do illustrations on this by hand, which I think I'll do. So let's go ahead and save this out as a very large image. Save this out as like a PNG. And I would say this pretty much wraps up the um, tutorial. So thank you so much for watching uh, Creativity with DA3 Live. Um, this, was, this was a fun one. So our goal, again, was to get that 3D object. Uh, we had a drawing. I started off in Procreate for the inspiration. We brought some stuff into Cinema 4D and, and made this kind of 3D sculpture of the thing. 
Um, this was the end of part four, bringing our Cinema 4D file into Photoshop. And um, I guess what I'm going to do now is bring my uh, Photoshop file back into Procreate and do illustrations back on it for a full loop. So thank you so much for watching Creativity with DA3 Live. Have a creative and productive day.